All right, guys, so now what we're doing is doing the adapter. This is the MCC Loyalty drive-by wire adapter. This works with the Bosch drive-by wire. This is the 82 millimeter. If you guys want the part number, again, I did this in another video, but there's the part number for the Bosch drive-by wire. This is the 82 millimeter version. Multiple places out there sell it. I got it from FCP Euro in the past, but their prices have skyrocketed. 10 months ago, I bought this for 160. It's now 240 on their website. So I got this from Advanced Auto. Using a discount online, I think it came shipped to my door for 150 with a lifetime guarantee. So, and it's something that's easy to remove too, so it's not like, oh my God, I can't get to it. So, uh, it's something pretty nice and easy to get to. Uh, he makes this little adapter. Some people don't like this, but I like the fact that it at least adapts it to a standard intake manifold. I wish this was welded to it, but you know, eventually that might come. It's just hard to get these manifolds from China right now. Um, it is what it is. So yeah, um, yeah, it's fucking crazy. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and adapt this on. Oh, another thing I wanted to show if I haven't shown it already is look how, see how this looks green guys? I'm like, oh my God, I got too much heat in my engine bay, right? So I'm gonna flip this over, perfectly black. The sun from popping the hood did that, turned it color. So anodizing, which is funny, it's just shows how tricky and finicky anodizing is. My wife's, which has had the hood up way longer for way more sunny days already, because I actually didn't have the intake manifold long on this, is perfectly black still. Anodizing is very, very, very finicky. Um, so yeah, these aren't powder coated, they are anodized, which I do like because um, I can wipe down brake cleaner and like really abrasive, or not abrasive, but very harsh chemicals and it doesn't uh, hurt it, um, unlike powder coat, which will literally strip it. So again, I'm gonna shut up now though. I'm gonna bolt this up. It does come with the hardware so that bolts it directly to the intake manifold and also comes with the bolts to bolt the throttle body to the adapter then. With the O-ring too, it does come with the specific O-ring. All comes in a small little package. It's just worth the buy, guys. Again, MCC loyalty. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. I should mention too, this is offset and I actually requested this. They had a flat version. I like the offset and you're asking why, Ryan? Well, it gives either more angle towards like a hole like I have cut on my wife's in my car or you can flip it the other way and turns it so it gives it less of an angle and actually gives it more so you can run it down uh, the factory location and down underneath right there. So it's up to you. I had them offset it for that reason. Um, I think it works out a lot better. To have a flat adapter just didn't make any sense. So I was like, at least let's try something different. And this is uh, unique to MCC. I've seen other adapters out there now. Some people have tried to knock them off, uh, but they're flat. They don't have this like offset to it. So this is the one you want. It'll give you much better angle and location for the drive-by wire and fitment with a fuse box. And this is what it should look like when done, guys. I got it standing up here, but look at the color. You can see, look how black this is. Even the flange here is not terrible. You can see a little bit of green tint, but this actually has a little bit of different color to it um, because I think you changed the finish and stuff too, and I changed the machining because I think this is made in the US, um, not in China. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe this is made here in the States. Um, again, Here's what I try to say, because someone's gonna be like, well, Ryan, I've seen it before on eBay. You're right, I've seen this on eBay too. Difference is, he makes sure he and opens a package when he gets them from China. He also goes through and actually has customer service, gives a two year warranty on his intake manifold if something happens. He actually cares, he actually listens. And that's not just me saying, you can ask other people that bought them. He's really good with communication and he's really good with the customer service end. So just wanna let you guys know that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back up on the shelf now. I got two other things I wanna do here, well three. I'm going to take apart, well not take apart, but clean up the pump here and then spray this black. Um, I did this to my wife's and it turned out really well. So I'm gonna put a nice coat of paint, I'm gonna get this sticker off then, um, and paint this. The pumps usually don't go bad on Supras as long as you keep fluid in them and you don't run them dry. Um, they've always been good. Uh, another thing I wanna show you, my CA625 head studs came in. So these, unlike the L19s, uh, can be touched with your bare hand, even though I usually don't, I use gloves anyways, but it's nice to have that. For some reason, the L19s don't like oils from your hand. GSC valve stem seals, I've heard people complain about these. My wife's, my Supra, uh, Tony and Gagliato's all have these GSC valve stem seals, and I've never had an issue with them. Um, as long as you seat them properly, you're not, you don't just put them on, you have to then press them and you hear them click, okay? Remember, you have to hear them click in. Uh, so I've never had a problem with these. Uh, I might not like GSC for their cams, um, just from a little bit of issues I've seen. Uh, I'll not to talk about that in another video, but uh, their valve stem seals have been good to me. And then lastly here, I am going to make a stainless steel hard line for the uh, Clutch Master. This is 3 16 uh, or dash three, same size. Um, this is a rolled, you can get this in straight pieces. I don't care about it because I'm gonna bend it up so much to try and get it to fit nice. You're never gonna see any of this, so I really don't care. Uh, but I'm gonna make a hard line and shorten it about a foot and a half then what the soft line is, it's supplied by Granis. Granis does that, so you have plenty of wiggle room, which I get when it comes to a soft line. With a hard line, you can make it more exact, and I'm just going to put it fitting to fitting. So it's just going to have a flare nut and a flare nut on the other end. Very simple.
All right, guys, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is this McLeod clutch that I got from Grandis Racing. I've had this in for a little over three years, which you can see here. Uh, and I'm gonna go over the specs for this. I actually asked Joel, he didn't have the information offhand, so I called McLeod myself. They're nice people to work with, and they kind of gave me everything, you know, what the max is for what the clutch should be new, and what the minimum is, and it's time to replace it. So it is a four-piece system here. So if you guys see, we have the flywheel here. Uh, this flywheel is a two-piece flywheel too. You can see it's an actual two-piece. Keeps it a little bit chatter down and stuff. Helps it, you know, drive a little better, so on and so forth. It's heavier, but it will drive better. Uh, you can see we're actually marked it up too when we torque down the ARP bolts. Then you have your first actual plate. This actually has your pads on it. This is what you use to actually grip to your flywheel. And because this is a two-piece design, you almost have a flywheel in the center. It's not a flywheel, but it's another clamping area, right? So normally with a single disc clutch, you're taking this piece and clamping to it, right? You only have one area that you're clamping to. With a two-piece system or a uh, two-piece clutch setup, uh, you have a secondary that's in the center of it. And it usually is floating, right? This would usually not have anything there and it's chattering. This is a clamp design, meaning that it actually is clamped in there. So it has these like little spring actuators that hold it in there to keep it from making no noise and any type of chatter. Uh, again, two piece, I know the proper way I guess to say is people use it this way is a twin disc. I'm saying two piece to represent that it is two separate pieces here. Five pieces in total, but two separate discs. Uh, then you have the one that's actually closer to the trans itself. Then you've got the fingers and you've got the actual stamp piece here. And again, you have another disc here. Now you see a little bit of hot spotting on this one. Nothing too crazy, but there is seeing, it has seen some heat. Now, as you go here, you can see all the pieces coming together. Now, there is a minimum and maximum for these pads. The pads are these guys here. See these little triangle looking things? These are your pads, okay? On both sides will have it. Same thing with the one here that is closer to the transmission. Again, your pads. Now, Colton, we're gonna start with this one here first. This is the one closest to the trans. So there's two separate ones. Closer to the trans, closer to the flywheel, all right? Closer to the trans, closer to the flywheel. We're gonna start with this one first, and there's a minimum max. The max that these pads should have, so the distance between here and here, when you measure it, you take your dial calculator and measure it, is 305 to 315 thou, okay? 305 to 315 thou is what the max will be on that pad. The minimum is 270 thou, so that's when you're like, hey, if you're measuring anything below 270 thou, it's time to replace it. Like, if even you're getting close, I would send it into um, a cloud and have them rebuild it, have them put new pads on it. So in my case, I already wrote it out here, uh, but the car actually only has, after three years of use, is down to 300 thou. So the maximum is 305 to 315. Three years of use, driving in Ocean City, Maryland, 10 year, or 10 years, 10,000 miles, and uh, we only lost 0 .005. Like that is absolutely insane. So like to give perspective, this car goes to Ocean City Cruise Week every year, um, which if you've ever been to Cruise Week, it is stop and go traffic for hours. And I spend three days of just slipping the clutch, not once does it chatter, not once does it jump, not once so I have any type of issues. It'll just drive and drive for years to come. So it's pretty amazing they can do that. Um, I, I've never had a clutch this nice, uh, especially they can hold this much power. It's very unique that they can do this. Now, I am going to most likely try the Tilton next, uh, we'll see. Right now this is good to me, so I haven't decided yet, but I think that's going to be next up for me is to try the Tilton. Um, but again, I'm going to just show you guys measuring it out again. I got roughly 300 there. Let's put this down, make sure it's zeroed out. Zero it out here, and each pad's going to be slightly different. We're at 299 right there. So again, close, but roughly 300, okay? Uh, some were 300, some were 301, so um, you're going to have a little bit of variation pad to pad. Nothing's perfect. Now we'll come to the one that is closer to the flywheel here. Again, same type of way, you're gonna be measuring the pads. The difference is though, there actually is a meat, as I call it, the actual pad meat, the actual thickness there is different for this. Instead of 305 to 315, we have 315 to 330. The minimum's still the same, okay? But the actual maximum, there's more there. So it means there's more meat on this and allow for more pad. So if, again, you're gonna measure it in the same aspect. Let me put this down to zero. Show you guys zeroed out. That should be roughly there. And again, each one's slightly different. And this one's 312. What I have there, 315, so that one's up. So it went up to 314 again, depending how tight I get this. 315, 316. Again, that one's clamping it down hard. 317, again, some of these are different from the others, um, but as a whole, it's around 315 uh, if you, you know, mathematically round it out. So I mean, it's pretty impressive this clutch has lasted this long and it holds all that power. The car made 880 wheel horsepower, 750 foot pounds. This clutch is only rated for 800 foot pounds. So I'm at that high end and it's been driven that way the entire time. You guys saw all the rolling anti lag, again, slipping the clutch and it just doesn't give me any issues, hasn't chattered, hasn't made a single noise and it's lasted this long. So I probably, 
I could probably get another 30,000 miles out of this, which is absolutely insane for a clutch. Um, so yeah, guys, I just kind of wanted to show you that. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Again, if you have a question for this, let me know down below. Um, again, hit up Joel Grants, Grants Racing. These clutches wouldn't exist if it wasn't for him and him putting the extra time in to get these companies to work with the T56 mag. This video, guys, is also going to be a little bit shorter than my last one. And see a change there again. Again, it's a little bit chopped up again. Kids, but I'm, yeah, I'm doing, a, I think, a pretty damn good job by pumping these videos out. Now, I think there's a, there is going to be a little lapse here um, just because I don't really have any content. And I'm trying my best. I shouldn't say try my best, but I'm just not going to put up dead content just to talk about shit. So, um, other thing I wanted to talk to you about before I finish out this video, because I was going to finish it just there with the clutch, is talk about that I am keeping the four and a half inch intercooler that's in the car. It's a powerhouse racing intercooler. I uh, forget the dimensions. If I find them out, I'll post them up here. Um, I was going to go to maybe a five, five and a half, or six inch, but I didn't want the pressure drop. I don't want it to be again laggy. I, I'm really, it's hard. I'm really at that area where I have to make a decision of what is a street car, what is a race car, what sacrifice do I want to make? And I really want more street than I do race. I want it to be quick, but it needs to be enjoyable because then it gets to the point that I won't drive it and that just kills the whole point. So sticking with the four and a half inch powerhouse racing intercooler for now, um, that's supposed to handle over a thousand wheel horsepower. It might get a little heat soak. It might have a little bit of problems if I'm going back to back racing, but for the most part, it should be good and handle my power goals for what I need. It's a good core, sturdy, um, and it has cast end tanks, a little heavier, but the cast end tanks I really rely on and trust. So yeah, um, again, just little things. Some other stuff was too, I went ahead and replaced, I had rubber P clamps on there. I took those off and used the ones from Red Horse. Um, now the thing is those clamps, the holes are too small for a 10 millimeter bolt. So I drilled them out and then it fits a 10 millimeter bolt. Two 10 millimeters there and there's a stud here from the factory. Um, I just used a stud with a 10 millimeter nut. And I just do that again, aesthetically, just to please clean things up a little bit. Uh, I wish I, kind of want to take the AC system or drain it out just so I can remove that plate because I removed that one. I've got a table of parts that's going to get powdered. Um, they already talked about this, but all this stuff's going to get powder coated. So just need to get that all sent out again. These are for the sway bars, backing plate for the engine itself. Uh, it seems like a lot of guys don't run these. Once you get to like true drag cars, you can time it, take it off because these marks actually do help you set it up. But I like having it. It doesn't hurt being there. This is what actually holds on the undercover and some pulleys. And I'm debating if I'm going to do the engine mounts. That's something you can't see. I almost just want to have them cleaned up. This one's really nice. But this exhaust side one just said seen better days. Just from with the original owner driving it uh, in the salt and stuff. I think if they can just vapor hone it or dip it. Uh, the reason I don't like coating certain things because I do drop it or hit wrenches against it. And I don't want it that if I chip powder that I get pissed off. Right? I'd rather have it that if I hit it, mark it. I don't care. Same reason the manifold stays like that. Aesthetically, it's going to slightly rust over time because it's three or four stainless, but I like it that if I'm working on it, bang against it, I don't get upset. Uh, for the most part though, I do powder coat or coat things in general. Um, another thing, I'm gonna have to let go of this too. Uh, unfortunately, with the new fan setup, my Night Run Garage tank is no longer gonna be a viable option. Um, so if you come down here, I'll show you guys. This is where it mounted before, but with my new fans, it will no longer work. So it mounts just like this. You can pivot around however you want it. Um, it worked with an intake here, worked with the intake when it went straight down through to from the factory. So this works with the factory intake piping going this way or this way, uh, it just won't work because the shroud, which I can show you with my wife's, takes over that spot now. So see right there? You can see even with the piping there, I could sit it up and over that way. But with this uh, setup now, I no longer have that option and I'm gonna have to hide it. So my wife's has actually ran down through here and sits on top of the intercooler. So I'm gonna have to make another tank um, and do it that way. Lastly here guys, and then I'll shut up, uh, updating the block, we've got everything. So I've got 625 head studs, I've got the 625 main studs now too. Um, Gentleman up in Canada, uh, Ryan Rye at Velocity, uh, was able to sell me a set and he didn't even charge me MSRP. He actually gave me a slight, slight bit of a deal. Uh, in this market right now, he could have overcharged me and I probably said screw it and done it. So big shout out to him for being not only nice, but also being understanding of everyone's situation. So it helps me get up and running. Uh, the next big issue we're having is this. So Tom Provosa, who is one of the engine builders over at IEG Performance, which is a big super shop, is building the engine for me. And now we're running into issues with not the pistons because we're using JE pistons, the rods. Carrillo rods are back ordered for months and months out. And it's kind of one of the things like ARP, like it's three to four months, three to four months could be six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months a year from now. So he's trying to find me something else. I wanted to go with Carrillo rods with car bolts. 
Again, we were trying to go the extra mile, everything safe, safe. I know that's way overkill, but again, I wanted it as light as possible, as strong as possible, and as low maintenance as possible. So you have to spend some money to get all the three in one, right? Um, so that's what we're looking at, but can't find anything. So looking into Manly next, it probably won't be as strong, but for my power level should be okay. Um, so yeah, he's looking into Manly. I don't think they're the Turbo Tufts as a boost line. I believe that's what they are. Um, so he's looking into those right now. Again, JE Pistons, nine and a half to one. Uh, we'll be running mostly 85. 93 pump gas is what I run in Ocean City. And that's the only time I ever really sees that. So yeah, and it's just going to run pump gas. I don't plan on putting, you know, one ethanol or any of that stuff in it. Just streetcar, right? Oh, and one more thing, it's been a worry because we're going for more power is, you know, I'm, I'm checking everything across the board. You know, turbo is a bit of a worry now. So the turbo is up for sale, trying to figure out what to do here. So the Borg Warner is up for sale. Um, I'd like 1,050 for the turbo plus shipping because it's heavy. Uh, that's, you know, ceramic coated rear housing, powder coated front housing. It'll come with the drain, the feed and all that stuff. Um, so look at that over here. Here is the turbo, and that's just, it's dirty right now. I need to clean it up. Uh, but that ceramic coated rear housing, powder coated black front housing, uh, come with the drain, the feed and stuff. So it is a S369 91 rear housing too. Been great to me, not a single flaw. Just, I need to make a little bit more power. That also brings me to the injectors. Problem with, I'm finding with the injectors is we're gonna have to push the fuel pumps harder to make up for the power loss. So I'm kind of figuring out what to do there. There's no like good in between be from 1650 to the 2600 from ID. There is 2000s out there, but they aren't, aren't stainless steel. So I need to find something that's like a 2000, 2100 that is stainless steel because I wanna keep as small as possible. So, uh, excuse me, good Lord. So I can keep idling everything good. So that's one of the issues I'm running into too. Again, trying to find that happy medium, keeping it a street car and not a race car. Okay guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. Much appreciated. Hope this video is helpful. Hopefully the clutch part is very helpful. Again, twin disc setup or a you know, two piece clutch, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, it's pretty impressive how long they last. All you have to do is just literally drive it, enjoy it, and it just handles the power. Very, very impressive that clutch and it's not even expensive. I believe the clutch without some of the other add-ons is only like $1,700. That is mind blowing to me. You know, a twin disc clutch, $1,700 that handles 800 foot pounds that I'm like right at the cusp of and it's not even giving me problems. So can't beat it guys. Again, thank you all very much for tuning in today. I'll talk to you later. Peace.